guys welcome back to my channel today is another boss business themed video and this is a topic that I get asked about so many times if you look through my past business videos and you look through the comments this is probably one of the most asked questions that I get in my comments and that is how to set up your taxes, how to set up your business whether you want to be a sole trader or a limited company. So I've kind of combined them all into the topic how to make your business official, legit, whatever word you want to use, but how to make it, you know, real. So I've written down six separate tips and sections to do with this whole topic. So let's just get into the first one. The first thing you wanna to do to make your company and your business official is to check that your business name that you've had in mind isn't officially taken by anyone else. So there isn't another business I'm going to use myself as an example. So for me, I want to check online to see if Oso oh Curly hasn't been taken by any other company and it might not even be within the hair industry. Someone just might have a business called Oso oh Curly randomly. To do that, you want to go to your government website, whether you're in the UK, US, um, a European country, go to your government's website. For people in the UK, we obviously have gov gov.co.uk and you head to the company's house website and that's going to show you all of the companies that are registered companies so they can trade officially and they are officially within the company's house register so you can search that register to see if your business name has already been taken now someone may have made up your business name and they may have a business running but if they haven't officially got that that name like trademarked, it's not running as a um, limited company, then you can use that name. Obviously you would rather that no one is using the name. So I'd also do like a Google search to see if anything comes up with your business name and also on social media as well, just see what comes up. But again, Companies House is gonna be the way that you find out whether it is legitly taken. If you are outside of the UK, again, I would assume that you just go to your government's website and there'll be something similar to Companies House and you just register it there. Once you see that your business isn't taken, you can kind of bluff your way through your business life until you are ready to actually become a limited company. So just keep an eye on it that it's not taken. You can actually go ahead and trademark, but we'll get into that afterwards. Just make sure that there isn't a company with the Oso oh Curly LTD already operating. So now that you've got that business name, to make your business more official and trustworthy, I definitely obviously would say go ahead and set up your website and your email address. You can have a, at Gmail and at Yahoo, at Outlook to begin with, but I really do recommend you paying that little bit extra to just have your own domain name and your own domain email address. There are loads of different options for email addresses. You can get them through Gmail. You can get it through your domain provider. An example of a domain provider is GoDaddy. That's probably the most popular one. I'm sure you've probably heard of it. But it is a website that you go to and you search for your website name. So www.osocurly.com. See that it isn't taken and then you can pay for that domain name per year so it's like I don't think it's more than 20 pound a year I don't think so um I'll put the script the the amount up on the screen you pay a fee yearly and that is for you to have that website and you own that website name again making it more legit and then once you have your own domain you can again you can either pay for an email address through them for me example i pay through g suite which is google suite so i have my own gmail login email but it comes under as info at osocurly.com instead of info osocurly at gmail.com if you get what i mean and then you want to set up your website again i will be uh advocate for Shopify my whole life and I do have an affiliate code down below but that is not the reason why I would recommend Shopify. I've been recommending Shopify ever since I used it. I only just figured out that they have an affiliate program so it works in my favour that I actually do talk about them even more because it can benefit me and you guys because you get a free trial too. So again I only recommend Shopify for starting up a online store 
only Shopify. So now that you have all of that set up, you probably just want to secure yourself and this is what I did. What you can actually do is get your business name and your business logo trademarked, which means no one else can use your logo, no one else can steal your logo and start using it, no one else can steal that name and start using it. You can put TM next to your business name, so trademarked. You can also do a thing called bluffing and that is when you just a TM next to the name and you bluff so I mean someone will just see it and assume that your business is trademarked so they may not want to use that name but technically they could go onto the government website and trademark that name so you're bluffing until you're ready to pay the fee to actually get your business trademarked so I definitely do that just to cover yourself especially if you're already trading you've already been selling stuff um, your customer base is growing definitely the first thing I would invest in is getting your business name and logo trademarked so those are pretty much the fundamental ways of covering yourself there are further ways that you can cover yourself and make yourself even more legit but let's just go straight into operating your business correctly once you have made your first sale and things are starting to you know grow and get right up and running you're getting consistent customers and good feedback and the word is spread in i would set up your account side of things you can either get an accountant please bear in mind that i only just got an accountant i have operated my business for about five years without having an accountant it's definitely just up to you what you prefer what i have done for years and what i still do is i just have a spreadsheet of month by month and i have all of my incoming so sales whether i've had an investment wholesale orders i put that at the top and then i have all of my outs which is my expenses so like the gc the g suite fee my shopify fee inventory costs packaging costs loads of different costs and i put them in every month and I add up what came in and what came out and then what my profit is. So you wanna make sure that you're tracking that from the beginning, like set yourself up and get into that routine because that's really gonna help in the long run. So when you do hit those, God willing, when you do hit those six figure, seven figures, you are set up, you know what your business looks like, you can predict for the future how it should look like, you can make goals onto what you want your incomings to be and your outcomings to be, and you can just keep an eye on what you can budget on. It's very, very important, don't hide from it. There are loads of videos online and you can even attend webinars, even pay to go to events and classes about bookkeeping and accounting. It's something that you're definitely gonna need as a business owner owner i am way more of a creative mind i've not been very much into like numbers and stuff but i had to train myself to know because i'm in charge of my business i can't know this stuff this is this is stuff that you need to teach yourself there are loads of books out there as well i recommend profit first which i have recommended loads of times in past videos but i definitely would recommend to read profit first just to get an idea an overview of how you should be managing your money you also want to set up a separate business bank account so uh, a lot of banks actually offer but business accounts so definitely get a separate business account from your personal account because you don't want to start merging those two together trust me it gets complicated and it gets messy and you just don't want to do that so separate everything have a separate business card that you use for all of your expenses and it doesn't merge in with your personal purchases you don't want to be purchasing your zara um outfits through your business unless it's an expense but you hear what I'm saying. There are also really good apps out there that can track your expenses. I'll list some of them on the screen here. So that can be a great way instead of doing it manually. To be honest, I don't know why I do it manually. I just feel that I feel more in control of the numbers when I do it manually through Excel. But there are ways that you can do it without having to do that manual labor. I just make it harder for myself, I think. <laughs> So now you want to register your business because you've got to think about taxes. When you hit a certain threshold in income, you are going to have to pay taxes. Just like I said, with your incomings and outcomings, register as a sole trader or a limited company. And there are loads of videos on sole trader versus limited company. I will tell you from my experience, I only just changed to limited company this year. I had been a sole trader for 
quite a few years beforehand but now it benefits me to become a limited company so when you get to a certain level it benefits you more to become a limited company whereas um, when you're quite new and small and starting up you can just become a sole trader so being a sole trader is simply like being self-employed basically whereas being a limited company separates you the person from your company so if your company was to get sued it doesn't reflect on you as a person it's the company that's getting sued so yeah it benefits you the more you grow to become a limited company but again it all depends on your circumstances what type of business you have just make sure you do a lot of research into which one benefits you the most so once you have registered as a sole trader or limited company you do have to do your tax return you can either do it okay don't hold me hostage to what i'm saying here guys i'm gonna leave some links to stuff down below but from my memory you can actually file your taxes monthly if you choose to i think you can do it quarterly when people usually do it is either in january or april those are the deadlines for tax return where you are no longer operating as an employee where your tax is automatically taken out of your pay slip that is not a thing that's going to happen from now on that you're a sole trader or a limited company that means you need to be in charge of put of money aside for your taxes because when it comes to the end of the year you don't want to be left with no money aside to file your tax return and there are ways to bring down the tax return amount so once you've gone through the government website and you've gone to the tax side of things you will see you have to fill out some long form and that's why you need to make sure you have your ins and your expenses like set aside because you'll have to refer to that when you're entering how much you made that year and how much your expenses were once it does all of that it comes up with a number that it says that you owe in taxes and you can kind of work out what other things you can file as expenses to bring down that number but you don't want to file a lot of things as expenses because in the long run that can burn you when it comes to buying a house and stuff like that so you really want to think about what you're doing and speak to an accountant speak to a professional if you can and just let them know your concerns let them know that in your in in your future you want to buy you want to do this you want to do that you want to invest and just make sure that you are doing the best thing for you and your business so the next way that you can really protect your actual product is by filing for a patent now this is something that is great if you have something completely original and new and it's an invention of yours so let's just go back to for example i don't know the light bulb so you could patent that if that was your invention and to do that you have to pay quite a high fee and you need a lawyer that will go in and explain exactly what your product is they have to draw it out they have to explain every single part of that and why it makes yours yours and unique what that then does is it covers you if someone tries to steal your idea or steal your product and sell it as their own you can kind of sue them in a way so they have to pay you or they just have to stop selling that product so if you feel like you have the funds to do that and you feel like your product is something that is completely unique and shouldn't be copied by all means go ahead and patent your product so that's just another thing that you may want to consider doing so those are my tips on how to make your business legit um, how to make your business official if you have any more questions please leave them down below but i hope that this answered a lot of your questions again guys i can't go into too much detail but i am thinking of doing some kind of like class or webinar but let me know if that is something you'd be interested in doing and again there'll be a list of resources down below thank you for watching make sure that you share this with anyone that's starting a business share this with your girl boss friends make sure you watch my past girl boss videos and subscribe to my channel we just hit 10k we're well over 10k now so i'm very appreciative thank you for watching guys and i'll catch you in the next one bye